Mendy Kahan at the home of Miriam Coral, uh, the two directors of two prominent Yiddish organizations, Mendy Jung Yiddish in Israel, Tel Aviv in Jerusalem, and Miriam, uh, the California Institute of Yiddish Language and Culture in Los Angeles. Can you talk about dancing or moving in relationship to Judaism, any of its history, mm. um, what you know, anything you know, going back from biblical times or uh, the Hasidic movement, or what did Nagdim do as well? So we don't get focused just on the, what the Hasidim did. Mm. The Jewish movement, the Jewish dance is uh, it's a broad, uh, broad and, and also a little bit uh, cloudy subject. Uh, there, are, there are movements that we can see, that we can touch. It's like uh, movements in folk dancing, different folk traditions can be Yemenite, Ashkenazic, um, And then there is also maybe what we can call liturgical movements. And uh, it's like the movements made during praying uh, by different commu Jewish communities through times. Now, in biblical time, in biblical time, maybe we can try to put, uh, excuse me. So we probably didn't miss much with my hazy introduction. But, uh, it's hard to speak about movement, of course, of biblical times because we have no records um, of just descriptions and we can imagine sometimes like uh, there's a dance, a biblical dance described that Miriam went out with instruments and the women danced and responded in song. Uh, maybe some lyrical descriptions of dance in the Song of Songs, but not much that we can work with, I think. I think we have descriptions of kind of ritualistic movements um, in the temple, like he would stretch out his hands, bring it forward. Uh, but again, these are mainly literary descriptions which then can be interpreted differently. We have like some kind of incantational movements from the Koihanim. They turn here, they turn there, and, and they sway in some kind of way. But all these biblicals, is this from the first temple, from the second temple, from who are we imitating when we do it? Um, so, so it's fine, it's a cloudy subject and... Um, and, and I think we should go with it. What is interesting, actually, that if, if you go in a synagogue, Hasidic or Orthodox synagogue, you see a swaying when one prays, and which is like, it is very Jewish specific. It's not Catholic. It's not Islam. And funnily, this movement is not something which you find anywhere prescriptions or descriptions of it. Like uh, in all or very, uh, you know, very organized religion, the movement, no one knows from where it comes and why it is there in synagogue. So it's interesting, and, and this is maybe how one should start tackle with, with Jewish movement. Um, and this swaying, I think, is, is a very interesting thing on itself to be studied as a as a meditative movement, as a beginning of a dance movement, as, uh, as, as a basis to develop some kind of thinking about the Jewish movement. Uh, it is interesting, for instance, like in, uh, in prayer, like one of the sole descriptions of movement is before the Amida, where you stand. And there you know that on this place, you should stand with your feet together so that you cannot move because you become like an angel. Angels have one foot, not two. So there's some kind of special stability. And we humans, we have two. 
So we kind of, you know, this is the first step of a dancing movement, that you have two feet and not one. Um, and so we all, with one in the sea, with one on the shoreline, etc., we can develop this polarity later. But, but the Amida starts with three steps that you have to take forward in order to come to this quiet place. And then when you finish, you take three steps back. So this is also kind of a basic choreography of a Jewish movement. You come in, you get there, and you get out. And finally, in this Amidah, which is supposed to be a complete vertical movement from, from you to God in, in silence, like this is the only place where you do, do not utter the words, uh, there a, a movement is developed by all the communities everywhere. We don't stand still. You know, in this stillness, the body starts to be like a flame somehow. This is uh, this kind of the spirituality of the Jewish movement, which later modern dancers or modern choreographers will try to to grasp it. Where were we? We were at the Amida and going backwards, and then and then there's. Oh, and there's another, another that leads to something mm. else. So, so, so there is this kind of swaying, the swaying movement, the shoklen, as it is called in Yiddish, which really, it's, it's really interesting. I've, I've looked about, about it. You have some uh, sages and, and researchers ask why a little bit, I mean, from the inside, from where does it come? Instead, it says because you need to shake in front, so there's no, there's no inertia. You, 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 collapse Moisai tomorrow. No, all my bones shall shake, and this is from where this movement comes. But it is, I think, it is, it is deeper. It is not from some kind of construct that we do it. It's really an inner movement of the people. It's a very, a very grassroots thing, this Jewish movement. Um, even in, I, I know that there are Tunisian legends which explain it because the Jews did not, were not allowed to ride the camels. And this is why in the Amida, in order to feel that they do have dignity and respect, they made this movement of of camels, right? So, so the, it, it feels like these interpretations that come after the fact. Um, but that it's there, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see this uh, swaying back and forth. Am I? Am I not? Will I? Or, or it's kind of a half a Sufi movement, which actually, if you would have the courage, you would go turning around, but no. You go, like, you want to get higher. And then there's the... And, and really, I, like, these movements are... Is knocking, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door a little step higher, a little more. You want to get into the text, into your mind, into your spirit, into the word, and not be disturbed by nothing else. And this is like you create kind of a of a spiritual aura or cloud around you, and 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 you have so many kinds, like I, which I, I, this this I got from synagogue, of course, from watching, from being there, from. Uh, um, and maybe I will try to imitate a few, just but this is such a rich vocabulary and it's so changing. And actually, in different Hasidic movements, because some kind of rebels would be like you have the more introvert movement, which can go like, like a leaf, and then you have the, the fighting, the and, and so if you had the a rebbe, a leader, which was more in this vocabulary or more in that. And so with the music, also some kind of body language developed, which filled the community, gave it its color, and was kind of transmitted. Obviously, these are also, uh, I guess it's moved, it, all these body vocabularies are influenced by, by the context. Are you proud? 
Uh, are you proud Jew? Or are you frightened Jew? Are you uh, in, in, in despair? Like, etc. Um, so this is, let's say, we can call this as some kind of liturgical movement language, right? Because as liturgy uh, talks, sometimes it's very much listening to itself, sometimes not. There's also the body movement which develops there, and which you see in more we become civilized or less primitive, or, or, or not primitive in the sense, uh, you know, uh, like we do not listen to speaking in tongues anymore so much. We listen to crystallized uh, words. Or re um, we we become the synagogue becomes quieter. You know, I th I've seen in American synagogues nowadays like we all sit and there's there's listening and even the. So there's much less body movement. It's more wordy, maybe more spiritual, more... Um, and then it becomes expressed more in dance, and dance becomes like an abstract uh, questing for this movement, or a place where this movement can then in a more crystallized way live on. It's interesting, like this quest which I think Benjamin Zemach from whom I had like the privilege to to learn, and this was like a tradition where they really in the they were looking for the Jewish movement. They tried to, and the work of Tzemach, and I think the Habima Theater, of, as I understood it, uh, it was to merge the modernistic view of what movement should express, individuality. Uh, um, uh, to they try to find like the Jewish archetype movement, the movement of the what is the sage, the the, the, the Jewish king, like um, the devil, the angel, the um, Elio Anuvi, you know, like and and they were really kind of painting. Um, archetypal figures, but I think they worked very f physically. They worked physically in the sense of that the body should express the idea that lies behind what it is to be a Jewish sage. Like maybe you carry all of the community in your back, but you're still proud. Are you in defense? Are you in attack? Are you a lion? Are you... Um, and, and they kind of created the vocabulary from such, I don't know, Re Rembrandt paintings of archetypes. <clears throat> the Hasidic tradition is different. It like we we are very not physical in some sense. Oops. Okay, we're on. Do you, um, we're on yeah, I I was I was. Uh, when I, when I try to understand like the Hasidic movement and and this this I worked with with people like Michal Gouvrin or, or Bruce Myers when we set out to to um, on a work called Gogu Magog which was really about the uh, Hasidic Rabbeim in the beginning of the 19th century like 1812 and. Uh, so there, there was a work really to see how the how the spirit moves the body, and I think that's that's a that's an interesting Jewish quest to see how it uh, how that works, and and there is something I think much of Western dance has um, like much of dance could be an enjoyment of the body or to to sh to show what you can do with it like. More beautiful and pirouettes, pirouettes, and maybe, right, Nureyev can do eight of them, or how better you can go against gravity. Now, of course, the Hasidic dance also would like to tackle, tackles with gravity, but 
it seems not to be able to, not to want to get out of the body, or if it wants, it does not hope to, to, it is like, yes, we want to get higher, we want to quest, but there we live <laughs> between it's it's hard to to say in words of course and and, and it cannot be cannot be put in a small box but i believe we do not try to discover the body this is maybe why we can drink also when we are drunk when we can, that we can dance also when we are drunk the hasidim they use something to kind of forget a little bit the body, and then the, if it sways already, then they would move with it, and, and easier, because the body always weighs, and, and, and joy always wants to transcend it. Um, so it's not kind of a discovery of the body, it's kind of making the body forget maybe its usual movements, because its usual movements of walking and going from one place to the other. The usual move is not to dance. It's we have to go from here, from A to B, right? And, and it's very interesting, the body language of the, of the Jewish streets, described in Shalom Aleichem, described in... in it's busy, 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 uh, tense, we don't walk. The Puritz walks in the park, you walk, right? The, but that's, that's a little bit... Uh, it's not so close to uh, to our traditions. We run, you see us running, the Jews, the Jews, they run. They run. And it could become paradise, but it's, it's um, only on Shabbos there's the easier walk, right? When you can put your hands behind your back. And, and when you walk like this, it is always with some kind of thought in your head. So actually the movement in dance, it will be how this thought how this emotion, and usually a thought, if it's a continuous thought, uh, 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 how it will affect what, how your body will move. It's like the nigun. Um, it's, th it's not that you want to create a thematic or a harmonic melody. It is a humming that takes form while you try to develop or clarify some thought. And then you can sustain maybe. And then there's a little bit of a flame, a candle is, is usually what... Uh, so this is kind of a few thoughts from here and there about uh, about Jewish movement about dance <clears throat> I, have, I have a thought when you were talking about the moving back and forth and it's not the whole turn of the mm, city mm, 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 mm. That, that this going back and forth is like between two poles that um, um, again is sort of more um more human. It's it's. You're here, then you're the other way, then and and that in that space, mm -hmm. there's something. Um, uh, an energy, that is created. Th this is yeah. This is the space, of of. This is the space of your possibilities. Like it's not. All over. Oh, and and. You know, and while moving, you you can open it a little bit more. You can, and 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 if you do, it's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I hear I hear that even in you know like Yiddish folk dance that there's very little turning or no turning, like complete. Ah, uh, complete. So I I I would guess so. Yeah, yeah. I would guess so. Then. Um, well, I guess also now the, these traditions get blurred because sometimes if you want to understand how a uh, share or how uh, uh, something is danced, you might look at other folkloristic dances by other people and, and try to imitate or imagine or kind of project how ours could have been. You know, but I think one, one thing which, which also should be noted is that 
mixed dancing is a no-no, right? And so dance should be a spiritual or an expression of your own, of, of who you are. Be it as a man, be it as a woman, I think. And, and it's, it's, it's characteristics nowadays that even in the most secular weddings, if they want to imitate the Jewish dance or to get, like there's the, the, handkerchief. the handkerchief between men and women. Like th if you see this, you know it's kind of a, it's a Jewish dance that we are doing, right? And, and uh, so this is also should be noted. Now, of course, today we will use that differently, but um, it's, it's a characteristic. You have this since since the temple that, uh, like, they were dance. They wanted to dance together on Sukkot, but but then the the, the, the sages they they separated these two energies. They this was kind of like everyone should develop their own spirit. Dancing is not to show the the the, the common bond or the sensuality or the eroticism because this is too intimate to be shown. You know, the temple was also constructed with. Uh, in the holiest of the holy of holiest, there was this image of these two angels in the face of men and women, like getting close to each other. But that's the most secret thing, like the the, 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 the this intimate attraction. This kind of cannot be shown in dance. This is this is too holy, and the longing for it. No, this you can try to show. You see, for, for me, this movement now is a, this is, I would start to think about something. It's hard for me to think when I'm standing still, hard for me to stand. And, and this is also how a prayer would start to be utter, uttered, of, like, uh, sometimes and then we would walk around the synagogue and, and you can sometimes find your little territory which you then develop discover so so actually by movement you create a little home and own space and um, and this is movement is beginning of a dance now what we spoke about what we spoke about the Shemayna Esra, which is really like this a kind of ritualistic description of more like that when you, um, you you stand where you stand, it's always your prayer book or without it, or you can like if you want to concentrate. These are these are all like all kinds of shuttle movement. You have also the digging one. And if you're more fierce digger, they would go like even. Something, something really helping you to focus this, uh, this shuffling, this swaying. I, I, I noticed that in the classroom when we were studying even mathematics or, or and when we really <laughs> wanted to get into it, we had this Jewish brother like, this is a way for concentration, waking up, I don't know, to shake your body out of its bodiness. Um, what you said also, so a part of the Shmoyne Esra, like, so you stand on your place and you go, I will open my lips and start praying to you. And then you go to the swaying, which is in your body. And when you're finished, you have these movements from time to time. Like, and there there are descriptions. 
you should bend your knees and then your head and then get up. This is the koirim, which is the knees, and this is in moide. There's just one like this in the Shmoinesra. There are three of those and one like this. And this is the moidim, this is the acknowledgement, and this is kind of the submission more. Um, only one time in the year you also have this movement which maybe is now like it's kind of maybe seen as the Islamic like the Koirim or Mishtachavim or Moidim and where you really do this uh, this is one one time a year it's kept like this is a movement one should not do too much it seems in in Jewish tradition What is what's interesting about the uh, Amida, for instance, as I said, like it's one of the few um, directors, uh, I say, uh, of how to move, like the indication, the, the directors. It's it's direction. It's, yeah, it's like a few of the few movement directions that we have. As I said, most of our movements they grow from from the spirit of the people, not of prescriptions. And anyway, so, in in Amida, you you stand and you pray, and then you do one, two, three steps back, and one, two, three forward. You bring your feet together so that they are one, like a hoof of a pure animal. And there you pray. So actually, you cannot move away. And there you stand in this prayer for 18, 19 blessings. And it's kind of a meditative ascent. Uh, step by step, brings you through history, through personal wishes, communal wishes, thanksgiving. Like it's a whole, it's a whole road. And this, like, then you go to your swaying as your body brings you. You can go those. But we cannot have the feisty one that we had before like the, because the feet are together. And there are a few like this is kind of the, the three times when you bow like this, first your knees, this is kind of a bow of sub submission, of admission, and there is this one of acknowledgement, this you do once, and then you finish, and then you go out of, of this holy place that you created. In, in, in silence. There is in the Kedusha, there is also one which, uh, which is that uh, we sometimes we jump. We jump and we say, holy, holy, holy. And this is on the tops of the, on the tops of the, of, of your toes. And three times. You try, you try, you try. We would like to reach as high as we can, but we are limited. And, and this you also have in, in when you, when you go out and make the blessing over the moon, the, it's renewal, and then you also say, "As if I cannot, def as I cannot reach you, so may my enemies, enemies, not be able to reach me." This is also like so. These are the few, a few kind of crystallized voca vocabularies of liturgical Jewish movement. But I think in the whole world of. of the movements that really the body brings out while in prayer or while listening attentively or while learning. No, like it's, it's yes, let's go into the text, let's pull out its meaning and back and forth and, 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 and the hand that try to explain to each other. These are, there's a whole array of which can be refined and maybe. Uh, 
put into a, a, a dense vocabulary. And then there is uh, and then there's the array of, of the Hasidic dancing movements which we which modern thinkers of Jewish dance have tried to to grasp like because they felt that it holds the, the an interesting secret of spirit like when they worked on the, on the D book on the like um, and it, it's as I said I think in, in modern dancers could really work to it by 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 letting the spirit tell the tale of what it wants to do in in bodily movements, uh, like uh, you know, the, the hand wants to give, wants to receive, wants to wants, and the whole body wants to stop thinking and being in order to let the spirit dance out its quest. You know, whatever comes out of it is kind of, will probably be kind of close to a Hasidic dance uh, with little awareness of the body.